Oh, they gotta stop this BS. All oh, right, we're playing Woke of Duty. What the hell is a Nazi gun fort? They literally have the high ground. They have to dumb down everything. And AK-47 in the campaign. There's still a chance. Okay, I take back what I said. Hi and welcome to History Legends. In this video, we'll do a step-by-step -step historical breakdown of Operation Tonga, the British airborne assault on Normandy as depicted in Call of Duty Vanguard. Are you ready? Because this is gonna be a hell of a ride. Let's go. All right. So those are C-47 Dakotas, which is historically accurate. Well done. Okay, we should see an entire platoon here because the Dakotas had a capacity of 28 men. If you count properly, there's 12 guys in this aircraft. It should be double that size. Okay, let's go. I don't wanna stop every second. Oh my god, stop. So in the game, this character is Sergeant Arthur Kingsley. And because he's black, they had to say that he's from Cameroon. Full African. Bit simplistic to me, but okay. Thing is, like many of you have pointed out, this character is actually inspired by an actual soldier. Namely, Sidney Cornell. And it's true that he was a British paratrooper on D-Day. However, I believe that Cornell was actually mixed. Half white, half black. At least this is what I assume. All we know is that he was born in Portsmouth from an African-American father. That most likely means that his mom was English. And that would explain why he's in the British military. But the game said, nah, he can't be mixed. He has to be full black. Quick pause, this is actually great news. Because on D-Day, there was an actual battle that took place at the Merville Battery. So that's good for us because it gives us a lot of material to compare with. So we can see the commander of the stick. Paratroopers call a stick all the people in an aircraft. Should be a lieutenant because he's commanding a platoon. Hold on. He literally said, it seems like the crowds already know we're coming. No, they didn't. Even commander in chief Rommel went back to Germany that day in order to celebrate his wife's birthday. Okay, that's true. They have to destroy a battery. Okay, no, the invasion will not fail, but it will cause casualties. Is it me, guys? Or he has a weird uniform for a paratrooper. Alright, well, let's go. Oh yeah, the thing. It's, there's too much light. It should be pitch black. They're jumping around midnight, 1 a.m. Ah, uh, that makes me think of Ben of Brothers. Hold on, hold on. Okay, we see the green light. Okay, seems okay. But from what I read, apparently there was also an alarm for paratroopers before jumping. Oh my god, like, they have to make it over the top. Like, so many casualties. Oh my god, again! Every time they jump out of aircraft, normally the aircraft gets hit. Every damn time. And honestly, all we see here is chaos. Look at how many aircraft they're losing. <laughs> it's pure spectacle. Correct me if I'm wrong, but apparently the British lost two aircraft to enemy fire during Operation Tonga. And not this massacre we can witness here. I literally went back to see how many aircraft got destroyed. From the moment he jumps to where we stopped, 12 aircraft got shot down. Let's do the math. 12 aircraft with a stick of about 28 men equals 336 casualties. Not even casualties, death, because you can't survive that. Which is basically how many British Paris were killed from June 5th to June 7th, all together. All right. He has to fall into water. Oh my god, this is literally a rip-off from Saving Private Ryan. They literally lack so many ideas. It's... I can't believe it. They're so out of ideas, they have to copy old movies, old games. They can't come up with anything new. Now it's true that a certain amount of paratroopers fell into water and drowned. But that mostly happened in the American sector where there were a lot of 
swamps. But where the British were airdropped, there was mostly farmlands, flat farmlands. Oh my God. Look at that. Very spectacular. You know, my dad, he actually showed me this clip. This is why I'm doing this video. And he said three things. The first thing he said is, look how the aircraft are ridiculously slow. He also pointed out that there are way too many searchlights. He says even Berlin didn't have as many. And he also said that the Germans have way too many anti-aircraft weapons. Aviation is his specialty, but let me know what you think in the comment section. Okay, it's true. Look at how the aircraft are slow. Like in video games, this is a typical mistake. Also in movies, you know it's CGI when it just slowly flies over you. Actually, I'm a nerd, so let's calculate. If you look closely, it says the distance is 298 meters. And we also know that airdrops were typically done at a speed of 240 kilometers per hour, which is a slow speed for an aircraft. That means that this distance should be covered by these aircraft in four seconds. If this game wanted to be realistic, the aircraft would zoom over our heads and then we would see a trail of slowly falling paratroopers. But the speed is very important too because it gives you an idea of how hard it was actually for anti-aircraft crews. Like they don't have much time to aim at an enemy aircraft. All right, so we see German troops, so that's accurate. It must have been scary in reality. Okay. Maybe they didn't have searchlights like that, but it's true that German patrols went to, to look for paratroopers. But don't forget, the Germans were as scared as the paratroopers because the Germans thought that they were completely encircled by thousands of paratroopers. So by looking for paratroopers, by trying to encircle them, they could also be encircled. Okay, he, he's... What? Oh my God, what? Oh my God, what is this? Guide 101 on how to make the Germans look super evil. And the worst thing, he doesn't even have a bayonet. At least make it logical. In 99% of cases, when the Germans found paratroopers that were stuck and that were not posing a threat, they simply captured them. You would be shocked to find out how many Allied soldiers were captured by the Germans during World War II. But that's the topic for another day, let's go. By the way, why does he have a winter coat? It's in the middle of summer. Oh my God. Instead of this gore, can't you make a better story? Oh yeah, the, the guy just flies off like that. At, at least check if your friend has extra ammo for you. No, of course. Why use an enemy weapon? Maybe your friend has a weapon that you could use. It's funny how the Germans are always running. Okay, but that's true. That happened a lot. That often on D-Day, paratroopers simply let German convoys pass unharmed. Because don't forget, their main objective was not to kill as many Germans as possible. Their main objective was to regroup. You know, they were scattered over kilometers and kilometers. Okay, here one obvious mistake is how many hills there are. It should be flat land and very organized crops. Like here, it's just put at random. And the British paratroopers from the 9th Battalion, the one that actually attacked the battery, even said something quite terrifying. The first thing they noticed is there were huge craters all over the place from previous Allied bombings, which we can't see here in the game. But the terrifying thing is that these bombs fell on a field filled with cattle. And as they were passing through this field, they could hear hundreds of cows injured, wounded, about to die. You can't imagine this, this sound. I'll just say that it would have been interesting that they add this little detail in the game. But no, they prefer to do, the Germans are having a barbecue. They, there is a massive offensive and they're just chilling. W what are they doing? Oh yeah, and look, the typical thing where the, the Germans have some face cover to further dehumanize them. The first thing is to call them Nazis constantly. Second is to cover their faces. Oh yeah, okay. The burning mill, purely for shock factor. Honestly, when the, the trailer came out and we saw this, I thought this would be a mission for market guarding in the Netherlands. 
But that would be too original, right? We have to do Normandy over and over. Okay, but we, we heard British soldiers. And this guy keeps using a German weapon. Chances are they'll think that he's also German. Oh my god, this is so ridiculous. L literally a joke. 100% chances that they would have drilled him. You're supposed to say thunder before exposing yourself. And even then, the paratroopers of the 9th Battalion, the ones that attacked the Merville Battery, they used something better than these code words. They actually used little duck toys that would quack. If pirates heard a quack, they would blow a little bird call whistle to answer. If whatever you met in the darkness did not quack, click or whistle, you shot it. This is why I believe he would have been shot. He's a sergeant and he does this dumb shit. <laughs> okay, pegging certainly doesn't mean the same thing today. Okay, finally, regroup. <laughs> Do you see the guy? He's just drawing in nothingness. They don't even have a map. Just circle. Bro, what are they talking about? Their only mission was to destroy this battery. They were specifically airdropped there for this purpose. Oh my god, I can't believe it. How crappy the dialogue is. Okay, boys, let me know if the uniform of these guys is good. No, you know, it's, we see that the people that did this scenario did not even research a second what actually happened. The 9th Battalion had 600 paratroopers airdropped, but only 150 managed to find their way close to the Miravale battery. Now that was the real problem. For weeks they planned the attack knowing that 600 men would attack this battery. Now the problem is they only have 150. What do they do? You don't think nothing, bro. The guy can't even do the proper routine, just exposes himself to enemies like that. Flash, don't shoot. Now he comes up with plans. What? Oh, come on. Why would he be in charge? All right, we're playing Walk of Duty. Basically, the one in charge is the one who has the most melanin in his skin. You're the boss? Okay. This terrain does not look at all like Normandy. And again, why do they have to attack the enemy? Like the, the real powers would have just went around. The moment you engage the enemy, there's hundreds of reinforcements that are gonna trap you. And they had to make this into a massive fort. I can guarantee you that in Normandy, there was never such a place, never such a fortification. What's the use of it? Why do they have a wooden palisade? It's World War II. The, the wooden palisade is not going to stop anything. And honestly, I feel bad because look at this. Like you have the, the these things, these Czech hedgehogs. Why are they in the grass? They're not stopping anything. They're supposed to be on the road to stop vehicles. But, <laughs> but they're not going to stop infantry. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, they put sandbags in front of the palisade. This is strong defense. Okay, and the Germans just leave a bunch of random shit just everywhere. Had they actually done that, the Allies would have obliterated it with aviation for weeks. That's one thing we forget is that before the invasion, the Allies bombarded all of Normandy, all of northern France for weeks. If the Germans had depots like that out in the open, after day one, would have been obliterated. You would think that for such a big fortress, the Germans would actually defend it properly, but no. Anyone could enter. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. So this is actually pretty decent. It's true that on D-Day, the main task of British paratroopers was to capture bridges. One of the most famous ones was Pegasus Bridge. Because don't forget, the goal for the paratroopers was to capture them intact so the Germans can't blow it up. Why would you put barbed wire on the side of the bridge? It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Why would you put these boxes on the bridge? 
<laughs> I expected this from the first Call of Duty games. But now I think with the modern game engines, can't we figure out something better? Wait, what? Why would you drive a German vehicle? First of all, they don't know the area. They don't even have a map to direct themselves. It's night, you can't see anything. What happens if you actually meet Germans? And on top of that, you can be shot by your own men. Oh yeah, just in time, a cutscene. Just to break the immersion, you know? Just to break the momentum they had built up in the game. Oh, they gotta stop this BS. They gotta stop. What the hell is a Nazi gun for it? It's the first time I hear these words. Can't they just call it a coastal battery? I literally find it hilarious how they have to dumb down everything. And the other thing he says, eight men. What do you mean, eight men? More like 150. Okay, they, they stayed literally two minutes in this truck. Couldn't just walk? Oh! Okay, I take back what I said. Okay, now we're talking. This is actually very close to actual events. This is what the British paratroopers actually did. They regrouped and prepared for the assault. And there seemed to be a decent amount of people here. Pretty well done. Now, the only thing is that they attacked in the middle of the night. But I can understand why for the game they, they didn't do that. Honestly, it looked decent. Now, you, you see the proper uniforms, I think think okay but one ridiculous thing is that they they saw a german truck approach but they didn't sound the alarm they're just like yeah must be our boss <laughs> and also you should see a lot of uh wounded men this is what happened in reality they regrouped but a lot of them had engaged enemy forces prior to the assault they were wounded Who's the boss? Okay, can one of you guys tell me who's the boss? All right. So that's pretty true. But if only, guys, 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 if only you could see how the Merville battery actually looked like. All right, let's go. Okay, you know what? Actually, I'll show you. So as a reminder, this is the one from the game. It's near the water, there's a massive cliff, and the bunkers are massive. Now compare this to the actual Merville battery. The casemates are there, but they're sort of concealed by being dug into the ground. That way, Allied bombers have a harder time to spot them on the ground. And the funniest thing is that, as you can see, it was in the middle of nowhere. It literally flat land, not near a cliff. But of course, it's less spectacular, right? Wait, what? <laughs> what is it doing? The Germans are there! What, what, <laughs> what did you guys expect? <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what was the tactical advantage of using a truck? <laughs> okay, guys, okay, <laughs> let's go back a bit. I'm confused. There's a bunch of fences here, but couldn't they just go around the fences? Like, it's easy for an infantryman to just jump over it. Couldn't they just flank German positions and approach in silence? I, <laughs> I guess not. Oh, okay, there's a second one. They literally have to let everyone know that they're attacking and from what direction. Brilliant tactics. Charging in open field, broad daylight. Pretty good. Actually, one thing that is realistic, however, is that the Germans did have a bunch of machine guns protecting the battery. And this is what makes me so mad at the game. Here we see a couple of MGs, maybe two or three, when in reality the Germans had 10. When they actually faced strong opposition, the game plays it off as easy. And the worst thing is that the British paratroopers only had one Vickers to face these 10 MGs. Wow, a beautiful uh, crater. Looks like the, that scene in uh, The Forgotten Battle. Okay, so it's trench warfare, but World War II. Actually, one thing that's good here is that you can see some wounded soldiers get, for sure they copied from the Forgotten Battle, but at least it's something realistic they copied, so it's okay. Okay, but hold on. Before you give your command, 
I don't understand what was the, the tactical advantage for the Germans to build a trench. Literally a perfect position for attackers to, to take cover in. Why would the Germans do that? Because what the British paratroopers of the 9th Battalion actually faced was flat land and just machine gun fire. The only advantage that the paratroopers had was darkness. Now here, okay, I'm pretty excited. I want to know what's his strategy. Let's see what's his brilliant tactics. Come on, Kingsley. <laughs> That's the best he could come up with. A frontal assault. <laughs> oh my God. Out of all the options, frontal assault. Why is this guy even in charge? Oh shit. Whoa, okay, the casualties are actually high. Okay, it it's surprisingly realistic. Like I told you, it's 150 paratroopers that attacked the Merval battery, but it was well defended, so the paratroopers lost 50% killed or wounded. Literally a massacre. Four officers were wounded, one dead, and some 65 other ranks have been killed or wounded. Okay, bro, just throwing a grenade inside that bunker. That's close to actual events. Okay, good. Clearing the bunkers caused many casualties. <laughs> what did I just see? Guys, take a look at that. You guys know me, I'm not the biggest gun guy, but in MP40 with a NIDAR reflex sight, modeled 1947 in 1944. I understand if it's present in multiplayer, but why do you have to include it in the campaign? All right, guys, you know what it means. We might see a naked 47 in the campaign. There's still a chance. Okay, they're moving in as if they, they've already cleared the place. Okay, time out. I can tell you guys, since I'm a Call of Duty veteran, that this is the perfect setup for one of these guys to get shot. For some unpredicted shock factor. How do I know this? They keep doing it over and over in every cut. Alright. Okay, maybe not. Okay, I was wrong. Pretty good. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! No, I didn't want to be right. Oh my god. Okay, now they're trench clearing, but you see how the trenches are so wide. It's useless. And they're out in the open like that. There's not a single artillery crater. Crater from either ships or aviation. These positions are untouched. When we know that right before D-Day, this entire region has been bombarded completely. Okay, guys, look at these wooden frames. What the hell is it? <laughs> What's the purpose of this? The only thing I can think of is that they're used to put nets over the trenches, like concealment camouflage nets. They would hang from one frame to another. And that would have been close to reality, but as is, without the nets, it just looks so weird. <laughs> Hold on, what? Oh my god, why are the Germans charging down? They literally have the high ground. This is literally like the attack scene in Fury. <laughs> I don't understand, why couldn't the Germans just wait in the trenches for the British to attack? Okay, now the Germans are throwing all their grenades. Couldn't they do this before their charge at least? This makes a bit more sense. Okay, this place here looks a bit more like the actual battery. So that's pretty good. But then again, they had to mess it up with a machine gun that that doesn't aim at anything. Like it, it aims against the wall. You wouldn't want any opening. Okay, this reminds me of Saving Private Ryan. Okay, it's literally like Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> okay, fun fact. The Merville battery did not have the 150 millimeter cannons that the Allies expected, but these were instead Czechoslovak World War One era howitzers. So yeah, it's sad. A lot of casualties were suffered for an objective that that wasn't a number one priority. It was a minor objective. Of course, these cannons could have caused some damage on the beaches, but nothing that could have stopped D-Day from going on. But of course, it's less. They want a, a happy ending. Okay, what do you throw inside? Is it the phosphorus grenade? What the British paratroopers used in reality to dismantle, to destroy the cannons was gammon bombs. Some sort of sticky grenades. All right, guys, this is all I have for you today. Let me know what you thought of my analysis. Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments section. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
And as always, if you want to help me create more content, don't forget to join my Patreon. Link in the description.